I'm Arthur Motes, and I'm here to tell you about my new book, The Motes Theory of Life. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I strongly encourage you to. This book not only is a fun read, but it's a guide to helping you become a person of impact and inspiration. If you are ready to take the next step to improve in not only your life, but those around you as well, go get a copy of The Motes Theory of Life, and it's available at MotesTheory.com. What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Most Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Most, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, man? Man, you know what's up, baby? It's another day, another episode brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook and app. Number one is safe, number two is reliable, and more importantly, secure, right? I mean, when you got the combination of those three things, it's always a great scenario. And for all the first time users out there, if you have not downloaded the app, what are you waiting on? Make sure you download it. But if this is your first time, download the app. Make sure you use the promo code MOTES. That's M-O-A-T-S. Use the promo code MOTES to receive up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of free extra money to play around with, right? There's nothing wrong with it at all. And, and when you're talking about some of these odds that we got coming up here, man, I think it's a great scenario. I mean, hey, listen, we're going to break down this matchup, but I just had to shout out DraftKings on the front end of that thing. You feel me? So first time you just make sure you download Dra- DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code most receive the money. And then after that, man, let's go get an opportunity to get some money. <laughs> Ah, man. Big game. Absolutely huge Good. game. We, we have the same clothes on as last podcast. Dude, man, we're, we're, we're treating it kind of like like Doug funny, like Mickey Mouse, like Hey Arnold. They just wear the same. Like You open up their closet, and it's 30 of the exact same outfits. So that's why I have my Arthur shirt on, because I have 100 Arthur shirts in the building. Well, dude, the la- I think the last podcast was so good, you just want to keep the streak going. That's what Hey, it man, is. <laughs> the same way you're growing the beard out, we've, we've made a commitment that we're going to keep wearing the same clothes for at least this week, all right? We're, we're not changing. So that's why you see us in the exact same attire, but it's all love, man. It's all love because we care about you, and we're thankful for you guys because... It's obviously Thanksgiving time, right? And we'll be remiss if we dove into this battle without talking a little bit about what we're thankful for. For me, <laughs> Deke, I'm thankful for you being a part of my life. I'm thankful for my wife and my children. Thank you for all the Steeler Nation, Bills Mafia, everybody that's out there that's following this journey. We're thankful <laughs> for all of you guys, all right? Shout, shout out to David and Josh at the Content Group. We, we, we thank for everybody. I'm thankful for all of y'all, man. All right? And I'm thankful for my favorite anteater. Shout out to Arthur. I'm thankful for Ben being back this year. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful for us drafting Claypool. I'm thankful for Minka's recent resurgence here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you got more than that, man. To what about it, your mama, daddy, man? Yeah. To it, the eight sacks, uh, Bud Dupree, TJ Watt, the best pass rushing duo. I'm thankful for that. Uh-huh. Thankful for Deontay, all the targets he's getting, the catches, the, the back-to-back 100 yards. Juju stepping up this year. This is true. Thankful for, man, see, this one's a tough one because oh. I go back and forth with Connor. You know that? I'm thankful for his last game. I'm thankful for his, his tough running and all that. But, yeah, that's what I'm thankful for this year. Dang, did, I, I missed it. Did you say any, like, family members or you just strictly said Steelers players, man? I heard a lot of Steelers. Those are given, dude. No, 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 no. It's never a given, man. You do need to vocalize that, man. Verbalize that. If you don't give the people the flowers while they can still smell them, how would they ever know they was getting flowers in the first place, man? I'll tell them in person. All right, man. All right. <laughs> well, well yeah, that's, and, and, I'm, and shout out to Steel City Brand. I'm thankful for them, too, because they're the ones providing with this awesome shirt. So shout out to Steel City Brand as well. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for everybody man and i'm gonna tell you i like i want you to hear from me i'm not gonna wait because you never know tomorrow's never promising we never know what can happen when we leave out of this place man so that's why anytime i get an opportunity to let somebody know that they're special and important to me i like to do it <laughs> <sighs> but a person that's not special to me or a team is the baltimore ravens they're not very special i'm not very thankful for them <sighs> i guess i'm thankful in a sense because they have provided us pittsburgh players with multiple division championships because they're always on the losing end of it and i fully anticipate them being on another uh short end of the stick as it pertains to a holiday scenario for some reason we've matched up with them in these holiday games man Bro. it's always fun man thanksgiving christmas thanksgiving christmas I, it's perfect man it's perfect 
Yeah, Stakes you're right. Are always high. You're right about the Thanksgiving one. This yeah. was back in. I don't think you were on the team yet. No, no, this was 17. The Levy. I mean, no, excuse me, not 17. This was uh 13. 13. Yeah. The mm-hmm. Levy on Bell helmet incident that I'm still <laughs> pissed about, dude. That you're trying to go by the law, but it, uh-huh. it doesn't really. It is the it, rule, though, bro. You're losing the essence of it, dude. He's losing his helmet as he's going into the end zone. Whereas it's like the, rule, the Jason Witten play, I think where they made the rule from, yeah. he was still running with his helmet. It was a bang yeah. bang play in the end zone. It should have been a two point conversion. Yeah. I think it was two points. Uh, it was either that or the was, touchdown. Yeah. It was it was a weird scenario. Yeah. But yeah, they robbed us that Thanksgiving. Yeah, and we were trying to get in the playoffs. I think it screwed yeah. us out of the playoffs that year. It's all good. <laughs> Trust me, it's never just one game that screws you out of the playoffs. I haven't seen a 15 to 1 team and I make the playoffs. But then on a high that, note, obviously the Christmas one, man, dude, in the color rush jerseys, the A B reach over the bro. end zone was insane. awesome. That yeah. that whole game just nuts. One of my favorite games, actually, man. But yeah. It has to be. Oh, well, so, you you laid out the whole uh, your your Big Ben favorite memories yeah. in the last podcast with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's gotta be up there too. Yeah, it's, it's was, definitely in there, man. Anytime anytime you get to play on holidays in general, it's always nuts. But man, something about the Thanksgiving games too that we always enjoy, man. Now, obviously for me, my Thanksgiving experiences, we weren't against the Ravens then. We we played the Colts, Colts in Thanksgiving. Yep. This would have been, I think it was 2016. And for me, man, actually we played Thanksgiving twice. We played the Lions the year before that, I want to say, on Thanksgiving. The one where Juju had the crazy long run. Was that, oh, was that Thanksgiving? Yeah, it was, know. yeah, because they you had sure? the turkey afterwards. Yeah, it was um uh it would have been Vince L Bell and I think it was Vincent L. Bell they got the chicken. Or no, it was Ben. And Vince, they got the chicken that game. And then you had the other one versus the Colts where the Killer Bees got the, uh, the I said the chicken, the turkey legs. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I've had two two Thanksgivings and two Christmas games so far. Yeah, yeah. Texans and uh, Ravens mm-hmm. on Christmas. Absolutely. And so far, man, on holidays. Undefeated. I didn't want to say, you know, you know how I go, man. We we, we, we get dubs on, on, on holidays, man. Ever since you joined the Steelers community. So, like, I, I feel like. <laughs> Right, so I mean, because I never played on it otherwise. That's what I mean. I, I, yeah. I'm thinking the lucky streak, not lucky streak, yeah. but just the streak. The absolutely, momentum man. is going to carry on into this week because you're it, still it part of the Steelers should. community. Yeah, you're talking yeah, Steelers should, here. Yeah. You're on Steelers TV. You're doing stuff absolutely, with Steelers. Man. So I maybe maybe that's a thing. Maybe yeah. it is. I just think about it, man. I'm like, <laughs> man, some some awesome games happen on Thanksgiving. Some awesome games happen on holidays. When we talk about the Steelers, and the thing that I also love is this, man. As a kid, man, we grew up playing football, turkey bowl, like. Man, it's Thanksgiving. We know before we go to eat dinner, we linking up with the homies, man. We're going out to somebody's field and we're going to have a game. And to just be able to do it at a professional level on TV where all eyes are on you, you know when it's when it's games on on Thanksgiving, man, everybody's around the TV watching that thing, man. So it's always a beautiful atmosphere. And that's why I think, too, man, that the Steelers always rise up in these occasions, man. And when you add the fact that it's the Ravens, that rivalry, how heated it's been. And we still owe them from last year. So it's like, man, even though we got the first one, we need another one, man. We need we got reparations we got to get from these guys, man. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I, I, I love how we match up against Baltimore right now. I, I was telling you a little bit off air. I said that uh, I kind of wish they would have won <laughs> against the Titans. And I do feel, I mean, we both agreed that they outplayed the Titans for the majority of the game. The Titans just had the explosive plays and the Ravens had fourth penalties, quarter. man. Yeah, yeah. The Ravens had the penalties. And I don't even want to say the whole fourth quarter because remember, Lamar led the drive to come back to tie. I mean, you talk about clutch performances. I mean, Lamar gave you that. And that was in response to his long interception that he had through. So when when I thought of that, I was like, man, they looked as if they should have won it. But then you lose in the way they did with Derrick Henry, you know, going off in overtime. I'm just like, now nah, they're going to be extra motivated. So a game that I, I still feel like we're going to take care of business, but a game that you initially are like, all right, it's going to be tough, but it's, it's going to be a levels to the toughness. I feel like because they just lost and they're going to be backs against the wall, it does add another element to it. We talked about when teams have their back against the wall, just how they come out swinging. It's a lot different in terms of the urgency that they play with. So it's going to be important, almost critical, that us as a Steelers team start fast. We can't allow ourselves to start in a hole against a team that's going to be motivated. Remember last time we played them, we started in a hole as well, man. And it really was more so us being opportunistic in the red zone, defensively creating some turnovers. And then offensively, Picked us being to able to... start off the, uh, yeah. the second half. I think it was even after we had well, our no, first no, no. drive. Think about think yeah. about so, so, uh, and not even then, man. We had the pick, but then we also had the bud uh, force fumble in the red zone yeah. before halftime as yep. well, man. So we saw where, you know, they were getting the ball rolling, so we can't allow ourselves to start slow. We have to start out kind of like how the second half was in terms of firing on all cylinders in all three phases. Also, man, when you talk about this Ravens team, man, they, from a special team standpoint, they allowed a big fake punt 
that really ultimately like changed the game for them late in that fourth quarter. Man, that's how they were able to get the field goal with uh, Gaskowski as well, who we know has been inconsistent. But he, I think, he ended up hitting a forty yarder on that <laughs> on that particular drive. But it was off of the fake the fake punt. So that's something else that it's like, man, they they they're gonna be alert in all of these aspects now because of that type of stuff. Bro, too, speaking man. of specialties, because we didn't talk about this on the Jaguars yeah. one. Bro, they're they're like little fake kickoffs. Oh, I never, man, I cannot it was believe. I liked it, man. I know that was amazing for and, us and to. Shout out to Keelan Cole with the kick, like that looked good. <laughs> that might have ah, nothing's gonna beat that Cowboys one, but I mean, Cowboys one at the beginning with the Falcons, the one oh, that curled yeah, around, yeah, dude, yeah, that, yeah, was that was incredible. That was but nice, dude, yeah. I don't know how you can draw something up better dude, than that. That was, and the thing was when I initially saw them come out with Keelan, I kept asking, I was like, I don't watch them enough. To know if he is on their special team. I was like, yo, it's crazy that they got this dude out here on, on kickoff right now. And then when I saw it, I said, oh, that's why. All right. And typically when we talk about like red flags, right? Even with the Titans on their fake, it's always going to be a, a breadcrumb. It's always, if you watch the tape and you study him, it's always going to be something. Their telltale was this. They switched out their personal protector for the Titans. So typically I want to say it's one of their secondary guys that plays there. They subbed in their backup quarterback for the fake punt pass and he threw an absolute dime i mean tight coverage on the sideline so then obviously you talk about jacksonville their telltale sign was what keelan cole being out there on the kickoff unit you're always going to be able to tell little things if you pay close enough attention you study enough and you just happen to be aware with it and shout out to marcus allen too on that like i said we didn't hit yeah, him on the last crazy. podcast but marcus allen and avery williamson they both were right in the point of action they were fundamentally sound. They didn't leave early. When you talk about kickoff for uh, your kickoff kickoff return unit, the key is this, man. You always see the ball off the foot or see the ball off the tee. If you don't see that ball off the tee, you do not move. If you move early, that's how you can get caught with a surprise onside kick because typically you're retreating while they're going to where the ball is at, and now you're trying to put a foot in the ground after two or three steps, and it's a bad situation. So it was good job being fundamentally sound. And shout out to Danny Smith, man. That's something that he always harps on and always makes sure those guys – and. And I speak from experience because I played those positions as well. He always harps on that. And he always, in practice, will give you those type of surprise onside looks to just make sure you're paying attention. I mean, he'll be in there just talking big water gum in his mouth. And we're like, all right, Danny, you done yet? And then before you know, oh, surprise onside. You're like, oh, Lord, man. Like, bro, this is crazy. And if you don't get it, it's a big deal. Like, not only him, but Coach Tomlin puts emphasis on his, uh, emphasis on it as well. So it was good to see that come to fruition and those guys be rewarded the way they were supposed to with creating a big play. Now, obviously, the drive didn't result in how we wanted it to result from a, a point standpoint, but still was a big-time play at that point in the game, man. Oh, it definitely was. Yeah. Now, with this Ravens game, what's interesting to me is you would think Ravens coming off these two losses. What's the They have four losses. They five and Yeah, four, they're six, uh, and, six four. and four right now. Six and six four. Six and yeah. four. They're out of the playoffs. I feel like there may be some Steeler fans, and maybe I was thinking this too, going to bed last night before I did my research and everything this morning, and just kind of thinking back to our Ravens matchup, uh, the first one, that some people may think, all right, this is going to be a little bit easier this time. Like, Ravens have Mm -hmm. lost a step here. I think the Mm -hmm. Steelers were kind of hitting our stride. Ravens are in a funk right now. I think this could be an easier game for us this go around as opposed to the first time. I don't know if if that's the right way to look at this. I don't agree with that I definitely don't think so because... One, these last two games, the Patriots and the Titans games, those were one-score games. Yeah. Those, I mean, those came I mean, down to the wire. Overtime, and one was in a monsoon as well. Yeah, I mean. those came down to the wire, and that was, I guess, you could even look and say them not firing on all cylinders, Lamar making mm-hmm. stuff happen here or there. Yeah. Um, and then if you look at our game, dude, like I know we came back in that second half, but there was there were some things that went our way. Like if Lamar doesn't throw that pick in the second half— yeah then I don't I mean that was a huge game changer so I I do think because at that time we felt if they would have scored that would have put us down what two scores I think in the game well they they were they were down at their own red zone no no no, I'm I'm talking are you talking about the the interception the Alex Highsmith interception yeah yeah second half Mm -hmm. because if we don't if we don't get that pick maybe they punt it and then we have to do a drive and everything but that was like instant like boom we get the pick boom we get the Ebron touchdown that just switched the whole momentum but what I'm saying is at the time if they would have scored I want to say that would have put them up by two scores, I want to say in the Who, game, them? the Ravens at the time in the game, they might have been up two scores at that point. Yeah, actually, they, I, I want to say where we got it within yeah, three yeah, or something. Because it was like going to be if they scored, like it would have been like back breaking almost. I do remember that part of it. Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, mm-hmm. my point is, 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 this is nothing we can't handle, but I don't yeah. think we should be taking this lightly at all, yeah, especially Steeler Ravens rivalry. But everything I just said in the past two weeks. I still felt like the Ravens were in those two games that I watched yeah. the Patriots one and then this last one against the Titans. Um, 
my thing is I, I think we should get off to a fast start. Yeah. That's that's my main thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not opposed to just abandoning the run completely, mm-hmm. firing off five wide, four wide, maybe Connor in the backfield. Let's just go at it, try to get up like 14 points in the first quarter, second quarter, whatever it is, and then uh, play the game out from there because the Ravens do have a tough time trying to come back mm-hmm. from double-digit deficits. So that that's what I'm about. I'll, I'll be interested in what you got to say. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of – I'm. <laughs> <laughs> We for this game for this game let's just do it come on five wide let's just fourteen nothing right off the bat so I guess my question to you is this you see it only as the positive so you only see it as fourteen zip there there's potential downsides but I'll, that's what I'm I'm saying I'm willing to go out swinging like that okay I'm not personally I, I think I've been I feel like we play our game the way we play our game we've been fine it's a reason why we're ten and zero it's a reason why we haven't even versus Jacksonville if we were gonna talk about Coming out, you know, guns blazing against a, a team where that's a clear cut mismatch, then Jacksonville would have been the week to do that. I feel like with Baltimore, as much as they're a highly penalized group, they still create turnovers. Marlon Humphreys, Marcus Peters, they still are very ball savvy. Um, they're linebackers, they still get their hands on a ton of balls. I mean, in terms of, I think Patrick Queen, not, not, uh, it wasn't Queen, I forgot which, I think it was a Wusu, I think that's how you say his name. He had, even had a pick last week. Like, they do a good job of generating turnovers. So if you do go out there with the recklessness and let's, I mean, as great as Ben played versus Jacksonville, we still saw balls hit defenders in the face. Well, no, I'm. I, but, I, I'm I don't. So, I don't so think my theory is, is recklessness. I'm saying let's just. But that's let's what it go. sounds like when you say just come out five wise gun blazes, take shots, and try to get a 14 zip. That to me sounds like we're trying to be aggressive from the beginning, taking all these shots, pass, pass, pass. If the shots are there, you take them. But I yeah. think the five wide and just what we've been doing with the short passes, you you yeah. take what you you take what you're given. But. Okay. I'm willing to abandon the run game completely this game, just right off the bat. I'm just telling you that right now. I'd rather go down like that as opposed to kind of the slow start that we had last time and things aren't working. So I look at it this, though. The difference is you can have a slow start playing that way and you can rally back to the passing attack. If you start off with this passing attack and they shut it down early on or get a score early on on a pick six or something like that, now where's your alternative? You don't have a plan B. You can't go from passing to more passing. So to me, that's why I say you come out and you play the way you've been playing. Hope that you get some carryover from this Jags game. Maybe you get a guy healthy that you can, you know, help show up from a, a run blocking standpoint. But if you go out there versus the Ravens and try that, man, I feel like it's going to end very, very bad personally. And even last time we played and remember, we even said in that second half, it, it still wasn't as if Ben was lighting them up with all these completions. We said a lot of it was still, man, we're getting these calls. We got the penalties and that helped us out in a big way. And then you complement penalties with the turnovers that def- the defense was able to create. And it worked out very well. I don't necessarily know if we're going to get that again. I mean, can we bank on getting uh, a, was a turnover four in turnover? the red zone? Four turnovers, yeah, right? Yeah, four. Tu- yeah. Was it four? Was it, four? it was? It might have been three. Uh, man, I can't remember. It might have been four. Was it two I picks? I want to say it was four total, yeah. Two we picks had two and two picks, fumbles. Two fumbles, yeah. So the, one, the one didn't really count because it was on fourth down anyway. The, the, at the end of the game. Uh, no, not the end of the game. The the fourth and two stop at under two minutes or whatever. They call it the, the Minka. They said it was a force on by him. Ah, that was that was the one yeah, whenever we were yeah. pulling up the Minka Absolutely. stats. Absolutely, that okay. was it, man. Yeah, so that was technically, I mean, so yeah, three turnovers, but a fourth down stop. So, I mean, as a defense, we count fourth down stops as turnovers anyways. So to say that you're going to get that again, and especially with two of those those being in the red zone on top of it, that's asking a lot. I personally don't think that happens again. So to avoid the the whole, man, if we can't get that luckiness happening – I feel like you play the way that you've been playing. You don't come out here and try to do something different, especially on a short week. I feel like you come out, you try to establish that ring game. If they shut the ring game down, that's different. But if you go out here and you're one dimensional from the start for four quarters, I mean, we've talked about some of the how negative it can really get going that route. That's my only thing that I'm concerned about going that approach, man. I'm saying 10 runs are fine. You could do 10 runs. Not completely abandoned, but 10 yeah. runs would 10 be good. 10 runs is abandoned. If if we <laughs> if you play a whole game, you only run the ball 10 times, man, I'm feeling great as a defense. Well, dude, here's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. With our defense, I feel like our defense is going to perform a little bit better this week. Obviously, we talked about their mm. offensive linemen being down. They're yeah. injured there. That happened in the game, in the Correct. middle of our game. And that helped. That changed a lot of the game so, for them. And yeah. we got Alu Alu coming coming back so Mm -hmm. there's that i I know they brought in des bryant their running game hasn't been doing that good these Mm -hmm. past couple weeks so i don't know i don't know how it's going to look against us i don't know if it's going to be more of the same as what they were doing the first game against us 
where maybe these past two or three games is more of what's happening with the Ravens now and what, what it's going to be going forward. Honestly, though, when you watch them, they've played similar. Their issues are their turnovers and the penalties. We say when we played them a couple weeks ago, they were one of the highly penalized teams. I mean, they constantly are around double-digit penalties per game. That hasn't went away from them. So even yesterday or, or a couple of days ago when they were playing against the Titans, they were moving the ball. And then you would see drive stall due to penalties. And that's the part that kills him. There's not even... The snaps in the Patriots. Yeah, game. I mean, it, not even the Patriots. I mean, he snaps on the, on the ground or going crazy versus the Titans as well. So it's those type of things that have really hindered them. But they still move the ball well. I mean, you watch him and it's like, you hardly, you're not seeing a ton of three and outs or a ton of just stalled drives. It's, all right, balls moving, balls moving, penalties or the crazy turnovers and stuff like that. So that to me, I, that's why I guess I'm still not sold in terms of just thinking our defense is going to just stone those guys. Because as much as people like to say, man, we had Lamar's number, man, we shut those guys down. They moved the ball with ease on us in that first half and literally... There are two red zone turnovers away from this game looking drastically different as well, man. Yeah, I, I felt like... I don't remember the other pick. What do you I, mean? For whatever... He had two picks, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, remember I, the other one. No, but it was Spillane. The, the, the start oh, of the yeah, game the pick yeah. six. The so pick that's six. what I'm saying. I'm like, you take... like, Are we banking on a Robert Spillane pick six to start the game off again? I, I'm that's not why personally. Gotta, you know that's what why, mean? in my opinion, we got to yeah. come out firing. I, I get yeah. it. I get it because we've talked about this mm-hmm. how many times. The running game is important. Yeah. And there is an argument for it with Calais Campbell potentially mm-hmm. being out this game that maybe Absolutely, we could man. get something going. Ah, dude, I just have that feeling like I really want to get up like double digits quick. And then, you know, I, I think we'd be in a better spot for the rest of the game. All right. That, that's just me, though. That's me. Well, I, who well, knows I if it happens or not. Ha- have we seen the Ravens get down two scores in a game early? I think Chiefs Patriots maybe? game. Patriots, Patriots game. They Chiefs, were down. Right? They were down two scores. And that's what yeah. I mean. It, I mean, they they were having a tough time coming yeah. back. They did. But, and but, my whole thing with the Ravens, the reason why I keep using that as an outlier is because of the elements in that game. We all can agree. Like when you're playing in a game like that, it does change it a little bit, man. So outside of to me, the Chiefs, I don't see a team. I haven't seen a team get up on those guys early and make them have to play come from behind. Like the way that they play the game, they they isolate or insulate themselves from those type of scenarios just by how they control the clock and how when they are not turning the ball over they're able to sustain drives their biggest thing like i said is the penalties and turnovers though if we can find ways to create turnovers then yeah it's going to be a great situation for us but to just come out and just start trying to not even think about the run i feel like you open up more exposure to us having turnovers which i don't want to give the ravens offense more opportunities with the ball i don't think that benefits us in the long run I feel like the less time they're out there, the best for our defense and things like that. I, but I think that we're kind of on the same page, but not really, because I think we can still control it just by passing. Because we've we've yeah. seen it in the past. Now, you know, do we? But, but we do haven't we, seen we've seen it situationally in the past. Do we, we haven't we, seen it for a whole half of football. Do we run it once or twice? I'm good with that. I just I hate the predictability of it's like, dude, like I just feel like we gave up two downs and now but it's I third and like, twelve. I feel like we only call it pre- predictability if the run doesn't work. If we go out here and throw three incompletions or throw two short passes and an incompletion on third down, we're not saying that's predictability. That's we're thing. like, oh, it's been, it's all right. I still don't feel good about a running game. As much as, because uh, we talked about this last podcast, as much yeah. as we got the ADRs with James Conner, I still don't feel good about it. Okay. And I'd rather be in front of that as opposed to, all right, let's see if, let's see if the running games on track this week yeah. and then we're sitting there in the second half or second quarter mm-hmm. and we got like 10 yards running and our offense is stagnant i'd rather be the opposite of that so if you were to come out and we're sitting i at, may be wrong i may be wrong but this yeah. is if i was the oc this i'd be running things but we know <laughs> you as oc is different we would have to say you as oc on a team that didn't include ben because your mind, when it comes to Ben and how you would operate, is drastically dude, different. Dude, if I had Rodgers, if I had Brady, if I had my, if I had one of those guys, I think uh-huh. I'd have the same mentality. I would. All right. I would. It's cool. But yeah, I, I mean, I may be wrong. This is just how I'm feeling, though. This is how I'm Tr- feeling. Trust me, man. It wouldn't be the first time. It's all good, bro. I, and I don't, th- I don't think yeah. there's, uh, I, or at least I do think there might be some people that are with me on this. It's cool, man. There might be. There yeah. might be. But no, I, I don't think you're wrong either. Like you know, Clay's Campbell being out, like I said earlier. Could we get things going? Who knows? Who knows? It, it's football. Who knows with any of this? We, we will see, man. I, I, I will say this, though. For a fact, if they come out here five wide from jump, throwing the ball every play. No, no, no. no four no, four no, no, wide, no, no. Wait, one wait, running just, back. Just, just That's listen, fine, too. Just listen. For a fact, if they come out here and take that approach and it doesn't work, they're going to be hollering fire Randy Feek. For a fact, they would be. 
for a fact really? they would be. I you, think it'd be the opposite. No, I think know, if we're running for it. A fact, if they come out here and they pass, 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 and we get beat and it's a bad looking performance, they are hollering fire Randy Feast. Thank you. For I don't know. a fact. I won't, I won't be saying that. 1,000%. You, you won't hear me saying that. 1,000% they'll that be right saying now. that, bro. It, fire, fire, fire. That's a terrible. I, who just comes on and abandon the run? I mean, you got to at least try to run the ball, man. It's Baltimore. They missed a class. How you not going to try to run the ball not once? And you just going to come out here and throw it from the beginning. We got down early, turned over, man. What, what the heck, man? Defense on the field too much because we're not sustaining drives. Because when you're throwing the ball, I mean, the clock stops. So, you know, three out, go quick. And then before you know a defense back out there, that, I'm telling you, man, they will be going nuts on Randy Feek. So that's my own. I'm like, we. I don't, I don't even. I don't want to play that game. I don't want to play that game. <laughs> I think we. I think we could. We've seen it. I think we could sustain and keep the clock going with with more of a passing approach off the bat. That's that's my thing. That's we'll my see, thing. Man. We will see, man. Because <laughs> uh, just my whole logic behind it is just I want to I want to come out and and get up mm-hmm. double digits here. I, I just want to yeah. I want to come out with authority. I guess my thing is this. From a passing standpoint, any of these games we've seen this year, when has the passing attack in particular started out fast? I just don't. I don't think we've really done no, that. We, we definitely That's... have. We take shots. If you watch these Steelers, their first two positions, is, they take shots downfield. But it is every the time, combination of the run though, every as well. time. But either way, you're still taking shots downfield, and there's still. I mean, we really don't see them connect on downfield. Pass. I mean, as a whole, we don't see them connect on a lot of downfield passes. But even more so early on in the game. We don't see them connect early on downfield. It's after they've hit the underneath. It's after they've been trying to run the ball, and then you get a double move, or then you draw that penalty downfield. But they haven't came out and blown anybody out the water to start a game. I mean, in terms of opening possession or even second possession, they they stall on a lot of those drives, man. I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily saying we have to take a shot deep. I mean, that could be part of it, yeah. but I'm just saying using the passing game as our as our catalyst for moving the offense. Yeah, right I mean, off the bat, right well, off the bat. All, all I was saying was we've tried to throw the ball early in the games like that right off the bat. I, I just and, remember and we, it more being a, like a like a run thing though, like kind no, of a, no, more no, or less it, a it balance. Was, no, you, I mean you're supposed to try to be balanced, but they were still were taking shots and not even taking shots downfield, even intermediate passing, and you still see early on. Drive stalling. I mean, there was a reason why I think it was 23 or 24 games where the Steelers hadn't scored a touchdown on the opening drive. Like, they were going through that as well. Then they had the one where they, I forgot who they scored against this year, but then it went right back to not scoring on opening drives. It's a reason with that, man. So if I know we start slow anyways, I don't want to potentially put us in risk for a negative early on while we're starting slow. If we're going to start slow regardless, at least minimize the damage start slow, man. Don't put us in, don't, don't, compound the negativity that's my thing man whereas if we know you're a team that's going to start slow and you come out here and you have a turnover early you have a quick three and out because you're throwing the ball early on and now your defense is in a short field your defense in a bad situation now instead of us having that lead or at least having the game being equal now we're having to play catch up that to me i don't like that feeling man understood understood so what all right is that basically us breaking down the offense versus the defense Uh. (laughs) Was that basically it? It's like philosophies, I guess. Because <laughs> yeah, I guess is there anything key like for our offense? Maybe receivers, running back, any any matchups, maybe anything like no, that. I mean, to me, the biggest thing yeah, I look we, at yeah, is this, bro. That, those were our offensive philosophies. Yeah, for for me, man, I feel like you still have to you have to keep this Ravens defense balanced because the way you take advantage of their secondary is by getting them jumping on stuff, looking at the double moves, or even having to pay attention to the run game versus the Titans. They had to be very cognizant of Derrick Henry. That opened up a lot of stuff on the back end. They brought a lot of their bodies, instead of playing, you know, these different coverages where you're having, you know, four, uh, not, excuse me, uh, where you're having four DBs out there sometimes, they were having to play with, you know, seven, eight guys in the box. And that puts you in very advantageous situations on the outside. So now you could take some of those shots. You saw A.J. Brown start to really get off in the second half because of that. But if you don't even give them the threat of a run, all they're going to do is sit back and play coverage. And they have the guys to do that with Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. Even we talked about Deshaun Elliott. We said, man, he's really surprised us the first time around. We said, man, he, he played well. And we didn't really expect that from him. And not to mention, I love how he hits. Dude, he put a hit on Derrick Henry. <sighs> Derrick Henry, I thought he was asleep. I'm not going to lie to you. He, he even got out the game for a couple plays. I'm like, bro, I like that, you know? But when you're playing against a secondary like that, you're not going to be able to just tip your hand and let them know that, hey, we're going to pass the ball. So you, your, your front guys rush against our O-line and we'll see who's the better group. And then we'll play seven on seven and see who can cover longer. 
I don't like that versus this team, but I do like if we can make them honest early on, the double moves are there. That still pops up on tape. The reason why you see them get flags, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphreys, is when their eyes are in the back four, they're looking at something else. That's not going to happen if you're telling them from the beginning, just play pass right here. They're not going to be worried about that. So that's why, to me, I feel like you have to have some type of, even if the runs aren't working, you still do it to keep them honest. And then from there, that's where the downfield stuff is really going to come open, man. But just trying to come out the bat and stretch them like that, knowing that our running game isn't a strength right now, I don't feel like it works the same. I feel like it's always easier to go back to the past, whereas you're not going to be able to, once they know you can't run the ball, you're not going to be able to go back to that. And that's mm. my whole thing with it, man. So that's how I feel about our offense versus their defense, man. That's I think that's the recipe. And when you watch them, the Ravens on tape, that's the teams that have had success against them. They've been able to have some semblance of a run game. And then you hit these guys with the double moves and they get the penalties where there's pass interferences or just flat out blown coverages because guys' eyes are in the backfield and then you take the shots deep, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Now, um, our defense versus their offense, I guess. Yeah, man. For, for that, man, you have to take advantage of when Lamar is off. And this is the thing, too. Lamar off is different than, like, Seven and Brady and those guys because personnel-wise, this is the thing. With our receivers, right, Ben doesn't have to be perfect every throw. We can agree upon that. And they, he has the they. I mean, seven has the receivers. They can go and make him right. With uh, with uh, Lamar, he doesn't have the receivers. So if he's slightly off or if he isn't perfect, that ball is either getting tipped or those receivers aren't even making a play on it. Those are the passes we got to take advantage of. If we take advantage of that, I feel like we can create the turnovers that you need. I do feel like since their O line has been banged up since playing us. And with Tyson being back, I love what we're going to have in terms of stopping their run. Now, it's going to be different because of the element in which they play schematically. They're going to have success. Don't think yep. we're going to come out here and just, oh, zero yards rushing. Like, that's not the case. They they can excuse me, they can do some really good things on the ground. But I just think that with Tyson being back and their O-line being banged up the way it is, that element isn't going to be the same. The biggest thing is going to be just controlling Lamar and taking advantage of when he does make a mistake. Because every game, I mean, he – I mean. And it's not just Lamar. Every quarterback has bad pass. We talked about even with seven last week. We said, man, you're going to have those plays. The difference is you got to take advantage of it. And the Steelers have taken advantage of those opportunities this year. They, I mean, even last year they were taking advantage of it. So I feel like if they continue to do that, they're fine. But if you allow Lamar and, the, and that offense to move the ball and you don't create those turnovers, well, then you're going to run into that issue where they're able to rack up points, where there's touchdowns and field goals. So that's the biggest thing to me, man. I feel like you're gonna be they're gonna be fine versus the run, but I feel like you have to take advantage of the passes that get tipped, the passes that are just not as accurate where the receiver can't come back to it. You gotta get those. Yeah. I, yeah, it comes back to everything we talk. I mean, yeah. when did we have this podcast? It was like three or four weeks yeah, ago. We were talking about the Ravens. Man. So I don't think much has changed. It's just like don't let Lamar beat you, mm-hmm. be able to contain him. And yeah. we had this problem with I mentioned how many times with Deshaun yeah. Watson. Carson Wentz and everything. I thought we did a good job in the Ravens game. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, dude, I, I think he's mainly their offense. It goes yeah. back to everything what you're saying. I'm not worried about any of those weapons. Like, Marquise Brown, I know he made that comment of, like, mm-hmm. yo, you got you to gotta utilize <laughs> the soldiers. receivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. But, like, He's dude, still having drops, man. Having drops. And then the one play in the Patriots game, uh, he's running down the sideline vertical mm-hmm. pass, and it seemed like Lamar like forced it down to him, or he's like, you know, I'm going to take a shot. Yeah, and it goes back, to your, yeah. goes back to your point. Like, yeah, I think most scenarios, if you have Claypool, if you have certain receivers out there, like, yeah, that's a good pass. At least you're going to mm-hmm. have a 50-50 ball. Maybe the, your receiver's going to catch yeah. it. Dude, there was no shot in hell he was catching that yeah, against man. that cornerback. Well, even last week against the, uh, against the Titans, the pick, I mean, he's taking a shot downfield, and if that's Claypool, if that's Juju, you at least like them to be competitive where either they're coming down with it or no one's coming down with it. The receiver, like, missed time to jump. You're like, bro, what are you doing? Like, man, be be, be athlete back here. That's some of the issues, too, man, with Lamar's receivers that he just doesn't have that type of personnel. We're not sad about it. I mean, that's your issue. We glad you got it. But that does play into it as well. But I do think for the people that just solely read the stat sheet, they look at the Ravens six and four and they look at Lamar and they say, well, man, these guys are falling off, man. Lamar is sucking. I'm like, that's not the case. When you watch them on tape, man, they're doing, they're still doing good things. Lamar is still doing really good things. It's just, if he doesn't play great every time, that offense as a whole 
it doesn't operate the same way. It puts it, it's a ton of pressure on him to perform great, not good. He has to perform great every time for that offense to cook the to, for it to connect and cook the way it does typically. Yeah, and you think their lines down, receivers aren't completely there. So that's yeah. really it, man. If we could do what we did last time with with the containment of Lamar. Then we, I mean, it's weird though because we did do a good job, but there were times throughout the game where I'm I'm on pins and needles. Yeah, I'm like, bro, yeah. like he's making these. It's like third and long, and then they get a mm-hmm. first down, and it's like pissing me off. So that's always an element there, and you s- still saw it in the Patriots and Titans game yes. where like, all right, things aren't really completely going the Ravens' way, but there's she always that way, bro. There's that one thing yeah. where man, this could be like a 20-yard run here. This is going to be able to sustain a drive yeah. where he can make things happen. So that's that's always the case. I mean, you saw in the Steelers game and this Patriots and Titans game, they had a chance to, to well, I guess in the Titans game. Titans game they had he, it in overtime, yeah. but then Derrick Henry right. closed it out. But in the uh, the Patriots game and our game, they had a chance to, to go down the field and have a drive for yeah. the tie. But, I mean, obviously the Patriots game, it was way less successful, yeah. and, and we had we almost had a pick, but... Yeah. We had the, the PBU in the end zone. But, I mean, they were still in the game in those scenarios. Mm-hmm. I mean, because, yeah, I, I think the, the biggest difference was the one versus us, it was a touchdown he had to score. So we saw them have to be a little bit more aggressive, which they typically don't like to do in those scenarios. But then you saw versus the Titans where they only had to get a field goal, and they looked so much more comfortable. And they, I mean, they executed great. But then once again, you saw the penalties kind of get them out of that situation and make it have to settle for a field goal. But that's them. That's who they are, man. That's who they are. Yeah, I don't think there's necessarily going to be a point where you feel completely confident. Yeah. Unless, like I said, unless we're up like double digits, I'd feel a lot better about that. Now, how do we get there? We we obviously disagreed mm-hmm. with like the philosophies on that and stuff, but hopefully we can get there in the first half where we're up like 14 points. I'd feel so much better about that going into the second half as opposed to maybe it's a close game where who's the what, which team is going to start controlling the ball more and, and really take over this game. I, I agree, man. I'd rather be the one that's that's up. We're up 14, and we could we could start doing things on defense where we make them more or less one-dimensional, you know? I like it. So you got any score predictions, man, before we yeah, go? Dude, you know what it is. Oh, 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 what you got, man? Come on, dude. I, I need to hear it. Because they got on me last, and they said, well, he Why? did this. Well, no, actually, they didn't. Get, it was because you cut the video short. What do you For mean? social media, you, like, posted it, but then you didn't have it where you're, like, actually saying the words 2713. You're just like, you know what I got? And I set my score, and then we just kind of cut it. No, no, I did. What do you mean? I watched the video. I didn't see you say 2713. At the end, the very end. What do you mean? I, I was watching. I ain't see it, bro. I saw, sure? I saw the score flash. I saw you about to, like, talk, and then it, like, cuts. Maybe I just mumbled. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, <laughs> that was the quickest. I don't even. I literally think you just said you already know where I'm going, haha, and it cuts. I swear. Because somebody, like, most people hit me up about it, and they were like, dang, bro, like, did you just, did you just jinx us because uh, Deke didn't say it? And I'm like, well, Deke edits it, so Deke might have jinxed himself. I ain't jinxed nobody. I thought I had it in there. Yeah, man. Yeah, maybe I'm off, but no, 27-13, right. I'll, right, I'll say it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 27-13. So Definitely. All right, I like it. For me, I, uh, and it's still right. Of course. Okay, I'll just double triple Come checking. On. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because no, I remember you said 13 and 3. I'm just trying to figure out. We got six games left. I, I don't know when this. Just checking. I told you, game <laughs> by game, I'm predicting us to win. <laughs> but not. Yeah, that dude, I mean, it's looking like they're overachieving on that record prediction here. So yeah. that's awesome. So for me, man, I got 24 21 Steelers right here. Obviously, 16 and 0, man. That's what I'm standing by until proven otherwise. But yeah, 24 21. I think it's a hard for a game, man. I got boss for the money, though. Ending it. Going into the uh the open open end zone too, man. I like that part. a uh, little win. Yeah, what's what's gonna man. happen? He's been he's been kicking him a little left here. I don't care. What's gonna happen? As is, long as long as it's left inside the, the uprights, it's all that matters okay. to me, man. Yeah. Hey, what's the win gonna do? Is it gonna affect it? I don't it care about all? none of that, man. I think he kicks yeah. it a little left. It's a natural draw, but the wind's gonna come from the opposite side. Hey man. Directed in towards the middle a little bit. As long as the result is a field goal that is made, that is all I care about. Yeah, yeah for sure. So yeah. But before we do get out of here, man. I do got to get my DraftKings picks this week, right? So we know it's a short week, so we don't got all the player prop bets. Y'all know how much I love my prop bets, but we won't have those this week. But today, man, what we have is two things, man. So, you know, I'm a parlay guy. Got to go parlay here. So we got Steelers. If you take Steelers' money line over the Ravens, that just means the Steelers to win straight up. The odds are minus 175, right? So still, like I said, not the best. But then you also have the Patriots' money line over the Cardinals. Now remember, the Cardinals are going to New England. It's a 1 o'clock game. So early kickoff for the Cardinals, man. They're coming off of two very, very emotional hard-fought games. 
If you take the Patriots money line and that, it's plus 112. But when you parlay Steelers money line, Patriots money line, you get plus 235 odds. I absolutely love those odds for both of those from a money standpoint, from a value standpoint. Now, the reason I go money line over the spreads is because with the spreads, the odds aren't the same. And for the Steelers, I think they are minus three. So that means the Steelers have to win by three points or more, or excuse me, they have to win by four points or more. I don't like that at all. And then for the uh, for the Patriots, they're... Uh, plus two and a half. So to me, I don't, the, the, the numbers and the spread aren't the best, but if you go money line with the parlay, I feel like you get good right there. Best odds in terms of being plus 235. So that's what I'm rolling with, baby. So shout out to DraftKings, America's top rated sports book and app. Safe, secure, reliable, and for all the first-time users out there, as long as you use the promo code MOTES, you will receive up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. So Take advantage of this opportunity. Take advantage of this knowledge and go get a chance to get some money, baby. So, yeah. So, think we're finished up for the day, man? I think that's it, dude. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the game. Let the people that you're thankful for, thank, let the people that you are thankful for know that they are thankful. All right? And until next time, baby. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, this next guest I'm very excited about, man. Played at the University of Oklahoma. He was uh, the first round draft pick in the for the Baltimore Ravens in the 2005 NFL Draft, 22nd overall pick, where he had a seven year career with the Ravens and the Rams. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Clayton. Mark, man, how you doing today, baby? How you been? Morning, man. Good, good, man. Been good, been good. Just uh, you know, taking it easy. Got my you know my daughter with me and I like spend a lot of time with her. Yeah, I like that, man. Dad, life in the building, baby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right. Now, right. Right. Now we know coming up, man, we got Steelers and Ravens. Now we know how big yeah. of a rivalry that game is, just for sports in general. So right. we always hear from the Steelers side, being that we're in Pittsburgh, man. But just talk about right. from the Ravens side of that thing, man. How do y'all view that rivalry, and man? What does it mean to you guys? You know, I, I think I think we view it the same, which is what makes it awesome. You know, and you know, and it's crazy because. Uh, for me coming from Oklahoma university and going into Baltimore and, you know, the offense that I was into the offense that I went into and then kind of the mentality that, that came with it, it just, it, it was like, man, this is, you know, a taste of what, what football was like in, you know, the sixties and the seventies mm. and the eighty And, and so getting to, getting to feel a little bit of that, but obviously coming up in the area that I was, was like, man, I, I know we need to throw that thing uh, too. So yeah. to watch, you know, Pittsburgh have that mentality and know that it was going to be a, you know, a tough game, a hard, a hard nosed game and still, you know, throw the ball and fight like, likewise for us, throw the ball, but still make it a, a bruiser was uh, it was, it was fun, man. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's an amazing robbery. Uh, and obviously, you know, the conference is on the line again, oh, yeah. as usual. And <laughs> so I'm, 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 I would, you know, it's a twofer. We, I mean, it's a twofer and usually has championship championship implications. So uh, it's going to be exciting as usual. And, you know, this time I hope we, we, we um, find a way to, to get the, get the ball into the end zone, you know, through the air and kind of allow Lamar to be Lamar and our run game to be our run game. 20 to 20, we dominated you guys. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. The red zone, it hurt us. And the we red had zone killed you. Absolutely. Yeah, red zone killed us. We have four turnovers. And so I think we would take the ball, just, just, you know, just go around and find a way to throw it up to Dez. You know, <laughs> hashtag throw it up to Dez. Okay. Then, you know, we, we come out with the victory. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, I like it. No, I, I did. I, I, you alluded to this a little bit, man. You, I forgot, man. You were part of a crazy rivalry at the collegiate level as well with Oklahoma, Texas. Like, how yeah. did those even compare? I mean, you went from yeah. crazy, you know, historical college rivalry to right. crazy NFL rivalry as well, man. That's yeah. nuts. <laughs> it's nuts, man. I think, I and mean, then I, I, I'll say the, the, the biggest, I guess, takeaway here now at 38, looking back, was like, man, being a part of two really incredible organizations mm. was huge in, in regards to the, my perspective and how I see you know, life <laughs> as a whole, <laughs> uh, business, um, and, and dealing with relationships in business, um, man, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're the best or, you know, two of the best ever. Absolutely. And so at Oklahoma with coach Stoops coming in and kind of, 
me getting to, you know, learning and understanding what Oklahoma was in the 80s and then, you know, during Bud Wilkinson's time and just all the prestige that's there to, you know, be a part of Coach Stoops and his regime and, you know, rebuilding kind of that presence mm. in the college space was was monumental. And then, of course, playing in that game was like, it kind of it, it set the tone for, you know, the year we went from ranked number 20 to winning the national championship. Mm. That was the first kind of, you know, I, I, um, you know, October run that we had. I mean, well, was that the beginning of September or end of September? Yeah. October uh, run that we had to go on and, and, and win the national. So, you know, it was, it's incredible. No other game in the country does seating like they do, you know, the, the split down the middle, which yeah. is, <laughs> that's, that's dope to see. Um, and so it, it's a, it was a hella unique experience and a, and a really good time with a really good, you know, uh, uh, collegiate organization, and then same thing in the NFL. Now with the Steelers Ravens, do you have things whenever you look back, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's memories or I, I guess part of me wants to specifically ask about like you going up against the Steelers defense. Were there things like frustrations or things that you would be going into each game, mm-hmm. um, Steelers Ravens, this rivalry? Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Was it something about Paul Amalu, Ike Taylor, our cornerback? Something that you would expect going in, or just would maybe frustrate you? And maybe I guess I guess you could drop a good memory too, because I was looking up some of the stats, man. You <laughs> yeah. had a couple games against us. <laughs> a couple, yeah, a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, going into that game, I was always like, I want to throw the ball like forty times a game because <laughs> obviously I'm a receiver. And I think it's air it out, man. Air it out, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Take a shot. Forget this run right down the middle. Nah, 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 nah. Let's take a shot. Like every series. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, going back and forth with, you know, our OC on, that's cool. Our OC about, you know, what what we're doing and, man, how we, you know, how we're going to stretch the field a little bit. It'll open up the run game, you know. Uh, it was, you know, kind of always a, a, a point of interest for me and, you know, in our, our conversations or whatnot, but, you know, I, I knew the mentality was going to be what it was and they're, we're going to make it a, a tough game, a three point ball game in the fourth quarter. And, you know, it come down to somebody either kicking a field goal or making a play on defense. And, um, you know, it just was what it was. And so I, I couldn't, you know, just kick, bump my head against the, the brick wall trying to get, <laughs> get what I want. <laughs> it's like, all right. We're going, it's going to be what it's going to be. And then, you know, in those games that where statistically, um, you know, I was able to to produce, uh, one of them was really cool because, you know, that season, I don't, I don't remember which season it was, but uh, prior to that, Coach <laughs> Coach Harbaugh came up and was talking about, you know, where, where I was and, you know, I hadn't showed up in a couple of weeks and Uh-oh. so on and so forth. And I'm like, oh, oh really? <laughs> well, we can go look at the film. And I'm pretty sure I'm still open. And uh, Tape don't I don't lie, throw baby. the ball. Tape don't lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't throw the ball. <laughs> like, and then sure enough, for whatever reason, you know, they told Joe, throw him the ball. <laughs> and they threw me the ball. And it was a good game. And he comes up. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, Coach, this is literally nothing. Like, I can do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> no sweat. <laughs> Just throw the ball. <laughs> I like so, that. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, and so it, those are great times. And then, uh, so I, I, I obviously enjoy looking at and watching the game. And so I feel for Hollywood in that regard because I know he wants the ball. <laughs> got Hollywood <laughs> out there blocking his little heart out, man. <laughs> I know, man. My like, guy, right, 168. Like, no, no. And no. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny man but uh what i was gonna say was um obviously this year again in the afc north it's hot man it's it's uh essentially a three-horse race right now obviously steelers have the lead ravens are yeah. two right now but even the uh yeah. the browns they're in the mix as well so just yeah. talk about man how you see this thing playing out down the stretch <clears throat> um uh man in all honesty i feel like you guys have, have the upper hand right now um but i feel like you know, if if we're going to win, we're going to have to produce turnovers. Mm. Uh, our defense is, you know, strongest running out. New England kind of exposed that. And I don't know what, where was that mentally or whatever. They, they went downhill and they hit us in the mouth. 
Uh, and so I know they're going to bounce back from that. Um, and just that attitude going into the game is going, they're going to be lit. So I know that's going to be there, but at the end of the day, you know, our offense, man, it's a, it's a ground and pound, um, you know, Lamar on the edge if we can, and then, you know, try to find ways to uh, hit receivers in, in that, that mid to short range. <clears throat> And we struggle throwing the ball down the field. It's, it's not been good at all. Mm. So, um, man, I feel like you guys do have the edge because you got Ben and your defense is strong. Um, I think Cleveland is going to be in there because they they play solid defense and they run the ball well. But I, I don't know that Baker is there yet where he can, you know, protect the ball when it's in his hands if he has to throw it 30, 30 35 times a game or 35 times in a game. Um, so to that point, I think um, – Man, you guys have the edge with the, Ben's experience and then that offense and the guys he has around him and then the, the way your defense is playing. But uh, if we were to 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 win it, win it, we're going to need to make – our defense is going to have to make some plays and get some turnovers. And our offense is going to have to find, find ways to get the ball in the end zone, uh, in the red zone. Because, you know, if you looked at that last fourth down play, bro, I, they knew <laughs> – Every, they, I they think knew. everyone knew. Oh my God! <laughs> everyone, they, 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 oh man, <laughs> Godly, I was like kidding. They triggered immediately. I was like, oh yeah, they, <laughs> you know, quarterback fake that. I mean, and I know this week we're gonna have something for that. So okay, or, okay, you know, coming up, we're gonna have something for that. Okay, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that's 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 how I see it. You know, y'all, right now, y'all, y'all got the edge. Okay, but, okay, uh, we, we, we'll see y'all. We'll see y'all here. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> no, man, when, we, when I was looking just at some of the, the guys you played with, man, you have a crazy list of, like, just talented guys, Hall of Famers you played with. But one guy in particular, man, the late, great Steve McNair. Man, so just talk about, man, what was that experience like playing with him, man? Man, rest in peace, you know, to Steve, man. Eric, legend, that was man. My Absolute guy, legend, man. man. Oh, my gosh. I love playing with him, and. I was so hurt when, you know, he got hurt and then mm. ultimately retired. Um, that was my best season, you know, with, you know, with air. And a yeah. lot of it was air McNair. Jeez, his, ex- yeah. his experience and him being able to say, Hey, just, just go do this. And I got you. <laughs> and awesome, that'd be that, man. you know, it was, it was awesome, man, to get that in, in a small capacity at that level. And to know, like, yeah, I know this, if, you know, I'm a math, I'm a, you know, numbers, math, whatever. And so I'm like, well, if we extrapolate that out, you know, those numbers would have looked a lot different with Ed mm-hmm. McNair. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, I feel you, though. Know, I trust my feeling. <laughs> oh, man. All that stuff matters, man. I tell people this has been sitting with you, huh? stuff <laughs> I am going to say, we, we feel like it's been every, on, your, on your chest for a while, man. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, every, every the ball, time man. I get, just, just get me get the rock. We would have been fine. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be 50, 60, 70. Like, I'm still open. I don't know what y'all talking about. Like, <laughs> just cut the hey. tape on. Y'all see it? Just cut the tape on, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, um, yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun. Such a good time. And, uh, you know, I, I you know, miss those days. And so, Absolutely, man. It was sweet. No, I was uh, looking up just your high school to college uh, transition. Now, this has to be yeah. an unreal story because you were <laughs> you were the junior varsity quarterback your junior Starting year, correct? All, all junior year, but yeah. then you started playing receiver your last game of junior year and started yeah. playing and played eventually all the way through your senior year. How do you go from yep. that JV starting quarterback as a junior, junior year as a junior to Oklahoma yeah. as a receiver? Like, like what I happened? It's insane, bro. Um, actually, seven on seven uh, football happened. To be honest, mm. in Texas, seven on seven is 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 huge. Uh, there's a huge tournament. About uh, I want to say it's probably about a 100, 200 team tournament down at Texas A and M, and we we finished eight number eight at that tournament uh and this was coming off of the one you know i played receiver basically a game and had a catch but i understood you know concept route concepts and how to get open and so getting down to AM, uh we finished eight and i was able to put up a lot of numbers and or a lot a lot of touchdowns and when i got back from that i got a letter basically from from one of the coaches at AM, and that just completely changed things and then um it just, 
it just kept coming. Um, it just kept coming. It was, you know, it was cool. It was mind, you know, blowing because in my mind, I was going to go to the Air Force. Wow. And uh, I wanted to fly planes and be an architect. And so uh, that was that's what it was going to be. And my, you know, my family's background, we all, everybody was in the service in some capacity. Mm. And, uh, and so that nobody had went to the Air Force. And so I was going to change it up and do that. But when those letters start coming in, it started to shift my thought process. <laughs> and, and so, like, well, oh, I think I got a better opportunity over here. <laughs> yes, Stanford <laughs> off like well, Georgia Tech, um, Van Deer, you know, like all the engineering schools, That's you know, wild, that have teams would come through, and it was like, man, this is dope. Um, and then, you know, as the the my senior season got going, man. My first game was like three touchdowns and all this cutting back. And, you know, Peter <laughs> Works is my guy. So a lot of what I did was just cut back because I wasn't fast. But <laughs> I understood angles. And if you were coming and your angle was a little high, I'm absolutely cutting back on that. <laughs> and so I was uh, – after that first game, I started getting letters from, you know, bigger schools. And then when Oklahoma came along, man, I saw them play uh, – they played Notre Dame. And, um, you know, the OC was um, Mike Leach. Mm, so yeah. It was really, I mean, looking at that was just like, oh, man, this is really throw the ball. <laughs> like, more Jada, come on. Uh, they really throw the ball. And um, and so when they came along, Brent Venables recruited me, who was the OC at Clemson now. Uh, he had that, that fire back then, and it was just infectious. And then when I took my visit, you know, I, I was born in Oklahoma, so I uh, had family, you know, there. And then uh, the staff was was nice. And Steve Spurrier Jr. was a receiver coach. You know, he, he was fun. Um, <laughs> and so they made me feel, I mean, it, it was fun, bro. Like, I just felt like I was going to go there. I was going to have a good time. And I was going to catch a lot of balls. And that was, that was it. And so I committed. And that's how I ended up at Oklahoma. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. What happened at quarterback? Were you going to be starter senior year? Uh, no. <laughs> our, no. Our, our senior, our, so our quarterback got a scholarship to TCU, Brandon Hassel. He was really good. And the backup that got hurt, too, he didn't get a scholarship, but he was better than I was like at that time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, Wait, why didn't crazy. you switch like, sooner? <laughs> huh? Why didn't you switch position sooner? Because I was starting on JV, I like okay, <laughs> and I like quarterback. <laughs> I wasn't and see again like my mental. I wasn't thinking about college, like my household. Yeah, yeah. I was going to college. I right. wasn't thinking about going to college at all. Like it didn't matter. Like I was, I was set because you know Air Force. I just go. Mm. So it was. It was yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you about the uh, your time with the Rams, going from the Ravens to over there. Yeah. And we could hear yeah, you yeah. lamenting a little bit about, you know, throw me the ball a little bit more. I'm always open. It seemed yeah. like things were clicking with the Rams. Sam Bradford there. I, they had Shermer as their coordinator. Yeah. How often do you yeah. think of that situation and kind of like your what if? Because you, your first, I think it was like four and a half, five games, you were you yeah. were looking really good out there. Over 300 yards, a few touchdowns. Yeah. So how do you how do you look back on that time with the Rams? Man, I I like it was um you know a bittersweet uh leaving Baltimore and you know all the goodness that was there and then it was really cool to you know go into St. Louis uh and I I got there the week of and Summer was like you know will you be ready to go Sunday I was like absolutely gave me the playbook on uh, Tuesday by Wednesday practice I had everything down. And he was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then Thursday, <laughs> got, you know, we refined it. And Friday again. And then by the time Sunday rolled around, was ready to go. And I remember we, I mean, we threw the ball. I mean, Sam had like 50, 55 pass attempts. And so it was, it took me back to college. And it was <laughs> like, this is, this is cool. And we won. I, th- I think we won the first game. And, you know, prior to that, I think St. Louis um, had, Two win, one win, or two win the last season or so. Yeah, because they had the uh, the over what number one overall pick was yeah, the number yeah. one overall yeah, pick yeah. was them. Because twenty ten, right, that, right. that's the class I was in, and I remember like Bradford oh, okay. being like the big deal of that class, man. Yeah, it was the number one. Yep, that's right. And so, you know, in those first four games, we were like two and two, 
uh, me and Sam had a rip, like, we had a, a, a vibe, bro. Like, you know, he, cause he, what I would, I tell people, I was like, look, Sam is, is ridiculously accurate. Like, he's very accurate. Like, mm-hmm. and, you know, me being there, he, he could still throw it to, you know, left breast blade, right, like, wherever, whatever shoulder he needed to put it on, he would do that while under pressure. Like, he was getting hit. It wasn't like our protection was awesome. Uh, but he knew if he put it in the in the spot away from the DB that I was, you know, I was going to get it or anybody was going to get it because we had him and Dola too. Uh, Dola, young <laughs> Dola, right there, too. man. Young Jeez. Dola, uh huh. <laughs> and our Alexander, like we have some young ballers, man. Um, and so, but Sam, you know, like he could get it there, like he he was good. And so, you know, it was uh, it was fun to have those, you know, first four games with him, and um, you know be able to have uh you know kind of the the statistical production that was was pointing towards hey you you could do it at this level at a at you know at an elite level and uh potentially have some uh pro bowl capabilities or whatnot and, and help a team win some ball turn a turn a you know organization back around and so that was uh that was fun to have i like that it seems like bradford was your guy i'm gonna say <laughs> Bradford sound like the one. Huh? I said Bradford sound like he was your guy, man. That, that was the one for you. Bro, that was a hey, <laughs> things are trending up. <laughs> no. <It was> trending. <laughs> now, once you had retired and everything, man, we saw where you uh-huh. had created your own headphone line. I believe it's yeah, Live. Man. Is is Live, correct? Yep. Live headphones? Yes, sir. So live just, headphones. So, yeah, so talk about, yeah. man, where the inspiration for that came from. Was that something that you always wanted to do? Uh, no, I, so I wasn't thinking about that at all. It was more, so when I, I ruptured my patella tendon in St. Mm-hmm. Louis and I thought I would be back and I came back and I only played like a couple games and it was still shaky and I was like, this is not going to work. So I, you know, went in and told him, I was like, yo, y'all gonna have to sign somebody cause there ain't no way I can keep going. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but during that process, I, I, a lot of the rehab was in the pool. And so in the pool workouts, I wore my beats, but I want, I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to fall off and. And you right. know, if they got wet, they were done. So I was like, man, I want to create an over ear that I can just, you know, really do my pool workouts in. So I started sketching and trying to come up with a concept that I thought would be more secure and then it would be waterproof. Mm-hmm. And as I started doing that, I was like, man, let me reach out to an engineer, industrial engineer to help me get what I, my thoughts and all, you know, my little preliminary sketches on, into a CAD model. And then let me take this journey to you know, figure out how to make it. <laughs> and so I ended up all the way in Dongguan, China, uh, making a production <laughs> model. <laughs> wow. Um, and I, it was amazing. Like just, you know, going through all the phases of, um, you know, uh, product development and then uh, manufacturing and then supply chain management, essentially, and, you know, shipping and handling and, you know, all that God. import. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. Like it was, it's been, you know, another, uh, College education, well, I'll say, uh, uh, uh elite education, elite education in supply chain management. Yeah. Uh, hands on. Um, uh, that I, you know, I can replace, you know, with anything. So I, I'm glad I got to do that. Uh, and it's, it's fine. It's, it's set up a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> for now, <laughs> and a lot of the other in- business interests that I have. And so it's, it's, it, it turned out well. I like that. <laughs> I want yeah. to th- I want to throw it back real quick to Oklahoma. Uh-oh. You played on the same team with uh, Adrian Peterson his freshman season, Uh-oh. where he completely A-P. went off. Uh, do you have a like a great story of maybe him coming in? Uh, yeah, just bro. even you know just his work ethic. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what you were seeing behind the scenes there. Yeah, he's a man child. He was a freak, bro. He came in and we couldn't believe he was a true freshman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, he didn't start until like third game or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Keeping him humble. <laughs> still ran for 1900. All right. Yeah, humble check. So still ran for 1900. Heisman finalist. That's incredible. It's incredible. Like he was just, yeah, he was just that dude. We were like, man, like, like AD, you, like, you literally could go straight to the league, bro. <laughs> like, for real. For real. No, no, you, did you I mean think, look at him to this day? I was gonna yes. say, did you think that he would grow into what he is now? I mean, this dude is still playing. Just think about that yes. for like still playing yes. in the NFL. This is crazy. But this did you think crazy. that he Banana. would go on to do these type of things on Sundays? 
Uh, I did. I thought he would be. I, I'm, it's it is it's mind blowing to know like he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Like we, I saw this guy at you know 18 years old <laughs> and was like, oh god, because there were like a couple guys that was like that that I seen, and it was uh, I mean Roy was already established, Roy Williams, mm -hmm. and he was just yeah, Roy was a freak, a man yeah, amongst boys, absolutely. right? Like period. And then there was Tommy Harris. Mm, okay. He was like, you know, like I don't know, six foot, about two ninety eight, but he was he had the chisel going on. He looked like kind of like Aaron Donald looks now, like Jeez, okay, just chisel, you know, in, in college. I was like, dang, okay. And then uh, you know, AD comes along, and you know, it's like, dude, like this is crazy. Like he's legit first ballot Hall of Famer, bro. Like mind blowing uh, to to know that that is that's real, uh, and to know that this is you know kid that you know, I host we hosted on the recruit visit and you know it was he's he real cool down to earth like man you know talked a whole lot he talks more now because I you know life and, right, right. you know a lot more mature whatever but just you know the real quiet kind of down to earth you know country kid <laughs> that was a freak physically is you know going to going to be going into the NFL Hall of Fame. <laughs> like, Dude, insane man yeah. insane yeah. <laughs> now yeah, Mark, man. we got two more questions before we let you go all right so uh -huh. we want to know throughout your nfl career man who was the best player that you played against oh man <laughs> best player i'll say looking at it now the real revis oh okay okay like for yeah, you a had period, young Revis too. That's Revis Island's time frame. Yeah, that's yeah. when. Yeah, them, them, yeah, them, the muscle fibers was, was firing <laughs> quick. Boy. It was like it was patient, 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 and then pew, like and he was strong. <laughs> like he was, he was, the, he was really patient and strong, and he could run enough. He mm -hmm. wasn't like you know blazing, but he could run enough. But his patience, his IQ, like he, he, <laughs> he was special. Uh, he was special. And then um, what was the second question? And then the second one is, you're welcome to the NFL moment. Oh, that was rookie year, Monday night football, <laughs> first game, playing the Colts. Uh, Peyton, and Matt, Peyton and, you know, Harrison and Wayne. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Stoke, like, they, they're warming up. We're supposed to be warming up. I'm not warming up. I'm watching them do their <laughs> warm up. Coach. <laughs> Like get your ass off! <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? It's like, man, that's that's Peyton. <laughs> like, coach, you don't you don't know who I'm looking at right now, coach. This like, is Peyton Man in the flesh here. <laughs> this is Peyton in the flesh, bro. Like, Mister Check, Mister Audible at the line. Like, yeah, <sighs> that is awesome, man. But, Mark, yeah, man, man, we definitely appreciate you taking time again, man. You were a blast. The listeners loved it. Out, bro. So, man, awesome, definitely appreciate man. you. Keep being great in everything that you do, man. All right? Likewise, bro. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you again, man. Appreciate y'all having me. All, All right. right. Peace. Later. <laughs>